Welcome back everyone. Thanks for joining me. This is Mindy here today for Lawn Fawn. In today's card tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a spooky Halloween background using Lawn Fawn's Build a House and Build a House Halloween add-on. I'm going to start off by stamping and coloring my images. So I stamped a few images using the Say What Pets, which is where the cat is from, and then the tombstones I stamped from Spooktacular Stamp Set. These are stamped on Lawn Fawn's white cardstock, which is great for Copic markers, and I used Lawn Fawn's Jet Black ink, which is Copic friendly. For the cat, I used W6, W5, W4, and W2, and I just added shadow areas on the side of the head and underneath the chin. For the headstones, I used N8, N5, N4, and N2. I started with adding shadow areas to the bottom of the headstone or the tombstones, and then I'm blending up with my colors going from darkest to lightest. I'm looking at it as my uh, light source is going to be coming from the top, so that is how I'm going to reflect that onto the tombstones, where the lightest part will be towards the top and the darkest area towards the bottom. Then I will lay out the coordinating dies, hold those in place with some post-it tape, and run those through my die cut machine. Now I'm going to work on my spooky Halloween background. So the inks that I decided to use are the Distress Oxide inks. I'm using Mustard Seed, Carved Pumpkin, and Fired Brick. I will be doing this on some Bristol Smooth cardstock, so if you're having trouble ink blending, try Bristol Smooth. It is a very smooth cardstock and the inks just really glide across it. I will apply the inks using the Life Changing Blender brushes from Picket Fence Studios and I'm starting with the mustard seed and I'm just going over the middle of my cardstock very lightly blending out towards the edges of that cardstock. Now you can also see when I'm holding my blender brushes, I'm holding them towards the head of the brush. That just gives me a little bit more control over the pressure. So if I wanted to go soft or more heavy handed, I have a lot more control over that. Then I will bring in the carved pumpkin and I'm going around those outer edges, bringing that into the mustard seed. Now you notice I'm not blending at the bottom and that is because I know I'm going to have grass down there. So I'm not concerned with ink blending the bottom portion of my card. Once I have that carved pumpkin, I do go back over uh, with my mustard seed to kind of help blend those two lines together. And then I will bring in the fired brick and go around those outmost edges and bring it in towards the carved pumpkin a little bit. A trick when ink blending is a lot of times it can take multiple times of going over them to get that really smooth blend. And that is what I will do here. I'm going back over each of those colors to kind of highlight them, enhance them a little bit, and really smooth out that transition between the two. And I'm also working on a craft sheet here, a craft map. That just helps protect my work surface and is, makes it easy for cleanup. Next, I'm bringing in black distress ink. So this is the regular distress ink. And the reason I chose this is because it is a lot more intense than the oxide because the oxides will leave that chalky finish. And I also personally have a blending brush dedicated to just black ink. That way I can still wipe it off, but I don't have to worry about getting that brush completely clean. It is strictly dedicated to black because I personally do use black quite a bit. Once I'm happy with the black on those outside edges, I do go back over it with the other three colors that I had used, just smoothing that transition, blending it out, kind of pulling that black into the background a little bit. Once I'm done with the ink blending, I'll just wipe away that excess ink that was on my work surface. And now I'm going to spritz this background with some clean water. This is going to create those white speckles on the background and I will pick that up with a paper towel. I like to pick mine up right away because that makes it a lot brighter. If you let the water sit there for a little while, uh, the speckles won't be as bright. So that's totally preference on your part, however you want those speckles to be. 
Now I'm going to bring in the liquid stardust and you want to make sure you shake this bottle up really well because those sparkles can settle at the bottom of the bottle. So I shook that up really well and I'm just placing a dab onto my craft mat. I did spritz some water thinking I would need to uh, water that down a little bit, but you really don't. This is a great, perfect liquid that you can just pick up with your paintbrush and splatter all over your background to create these beautiful sparkles. Now what I really loved, and you'll see up close, is that liquid stardust kind of picks up some of that color so it almost looks like I had gold speckled on my background which I thought was super cool. Now I'll work on the assembly of my spooky house. So here I have the build a house and the build a house Halloween add-on pieces that I want to use for my card. For the house I used black licorice. I also die cut the bats and the spider web and the stairs from the black licorice cardstock as well. I have the yellow for the windows cut from sunflower. My roof and some of my window frames are cut from storm cloud. And then the boarded up window is cut from paper bag cardstock. So I'm just layering these up. Now with the door, I just made sure to only put liquid glue on the edges. I didn't want my door to be glued shut. And you can do a reveal wheel with this window and create a cute moving scene behind there. But I decided to just use a plain cardstock piece back there and just have some glowing light coming out from my windows. Now with the roof, I decided that I wanted that to be popped up a little bit. So I'm actually going to take some black foam squares and black foam squares are really great for this because if you look at the card from the side, it's really going to blend in with the black house. They're great. You're not going to see it. It kind of helps disguise that a little bit. Now for my ghosts, which I did cut from white cardstock, I just took some storm cloud or some black cardstock, trimmed a little piece off and glued that behind my face. And then I could just trim around the ghost. So that way it's uh, got a black face. I don't have it seeing through to the house and then tucked that into my front door. Now I also decided with my grass that I wanted this to be a little spooky. So I did die cut that from Noble Fur Cardstock using the grassy border. And I'm just adding a little bit of the black soot distress ink to the top of these uh, pieces of grass. Before I start creating my scene, I'm going to work on the sentiment for my card. I have a lot going on in my background, so I needed to keep the sentiment small. I decided to use a sentiment from the Tiny Halloween stamp set. I'm using my Misty tool to stamp this sentiment with some clear ink onto the black licorice cardstock and just using some light pressure to stamp that down. I personally like to stamp that twice. That just to me gives a really nice solid impression from the clear ink. Sprinkling on some white embossing powder and then just tapping off any excess. And off on the side, I have my heat tool warming up really well. And then I start by bringing it to the back of my cardstock a little bit and then coming to the front and melting that white embossing powder. Then I can take a Swiffer cloth and just kind of dust off any of the excess anti-static powder tool that I had used. And bringing in the Everyday Sentiments banner die, I'm gonna hold that in place with post-it tape and run that through my die cut machine. Here's a quick look at the background. Once it was dried, you can see how that stardust really sparkles on the background and kind of brings out some of those oxide colors since distress inks and oxide inks react with water. And this is a liquid, so that was a really cool effect to add to our spooky background. Now I can start working on the assembly of my card, starting with my grass, which is going to be the furthest away from me. I'm using just a tape runner to attach this, but I'm only adding adhesive to the very bottom of it. And the reason for that is I want to be able to tuck pieces in. For instance, this tree, I actually cut two of them from paper bag cardstock uh, or chocolate bar. I apologize. This is chocolate bar cardstock. And I use the trees from the Shadow Box Park add-on. And I, you could see I didn't add any leaves or anything. I just thought the frame of that was really cool for my spooky background and then everything else I'm just using some liquid glue so I'm taking one of the headstones kind of tucking it behind my layer of grass and even tilting it a little bit like it's tipping over the ones in the front 
I'm adding a piece of black foam square and also to my cat I added some of the black foam squares just to give that a little bit of dimension and then I can put my sentiment down with the liquid glue and I'm gonna have my ghost and my bats kind of flying around in the background there around the sentiment so just using the liquid glue to attach those and I wanted to kind of make those sparkle a little bit. I'm going to use the glitter pen to add that sparkle. To get the glitter started, you kind of want to push your tip up and down until it gets moving, till the ink comes down into that tip. And then you can use it just like you would a marker and color in those sparkles. Mine has already been used, so I didn't need to pump it too much. And I'm just coloring in those sparkles on the black bat. A little bit on my ghost and then the one that's hanging out the door and I also added a little bit of sparkle to my spider web I added up in the top corner and then we'll take a closer look at all of the sparkle and the beautiful spooky background with the really cool spooky house that we created really fun background and loving all these small ways to add sparkle to a spooky Halloween card that finishes up my card for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for joining me and have an amazing day.